The Chicago Bears rebuild looks a whole lot different. At quarterback is Caleb Williams. He's a 76 overall superstar 22 year old out of USC. And for the record, I tried to paint his nails. The game would not let me. There's a new wide receiver one in town, Keenan Allen from the Chargers. Certainly a veteran in the league, but there is no doubt he's still one of the best wide receivers. And there's another stud rookie too. Coming out of Washington is Romo Dunze. 6'3", 215, 92 speed, 93 excel. You add the veteran, who in a few years might be out of here, but he can definitely teach Odunze a thing or two. He's only star dev, but I expect him to take up a really big role on this team in the next two or three years. And then, of course, you still have DJ Moore, who's 26 years old, only getting better. This is a nasty wide receiver room. There's almost too many mouths to feed. First, a Detroit Lion, then a Philadelphia Eagle, and now a Chicago Bear is DeAndre Swift, who's only 24 years old. This team's actually stacked. In fact, they've changed so much that my only piece of Bears memorabilia is completely useless now. Offensive line is pretty young, and you've even got a young tight end who's kind of a stud in Cole Komet. Defensively, you've got Kevin Byard now, who's also been passed around a lot recently. Jalen Johnson is still a young stud. Tyreek Stevenson's got a lot of room to improve since he's still technically hidden dev. And the defensive line does leave a lot to be desired. You do have Montez Sweat, but he's only star dev right now, 84 overall. There's a chance we could get him there, but I don't know. Earlier this year, I did a Bears rebuild and it was one of the most difficult rebuilds I did. It was so hard to get Justin Fields to perform well in the Bears offense. There was no Keenan Allen. There was no Odunze. There was no DeAndre. Like it's completely different now. So I had to rebuild the squad. We'll be taking over the 83 overall Bears, but the first thing I got to do is I got to change our offensive schemes. This Chicago offensive playbook has a ton of plays that were designed really for Justin Fields. There was a lot of taking off, a lot of running, a lot of read options, a lot of lead options. Caleb Williams is pretty fast, but I actually want to throw the football. Now, as many of you know, Dallas and Kansas City are the most overpowered offenses in this game, so I don't want to do that either. I want to try something different. Our scheme is 92% set for spread, so let's run spread. We're going to go with Bill's offense. They might have everything we need for this, and I will stick to Chicago's defensive playbook. We'll be running a base 4-3 with four defensive linemen and three linebackers, so we're probably Probably gonna need to draft or sign in free agency another edge rusher for Montez Sweat, but I don't hate our linebackers right now. Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards are pretty solid. It's honestly just gonna be interesting to see how Caleb Williams does in his debut season. Let's head to midseason and see how we're looking. Oh my god. Whoa. Okay, we just got smacked by the Raiders, but we're five and two. We really haven't done much to this team. He's what? What? Caleb Williams is first in the league right now in passing yards. There's no way he can keep this up. He has 15 more yards than Mahomes with the same amount of games played. And in third is JJ McCarthy. Looks like that spread offense is really good for Caleb Williams. It does make sense that we have so many good receivers. Like you just got to get the ball in their hands. And honestly, he's putting up an insane rookie career. 14 touchdowns, only five interceptions. Probably won't get MVP. I mean, duh. Mahomes is going to get it. But he's definitely getting offensive rookie of the year. DeAndre Swift already has 10 touchdowns through seven games. Fantasy monster. He's got 500 yards receiving. It's been mainly Keenan Allen. Allen, then DJ Moore, Komet, and Odunze's put up a solid, I mean, really good averages per reception. He's just not getting too many reps. 23 receptions through seven games, skitting out three catches a game. That's actually pretty good reps as a rookie. Defensively, I think is where this team's gonna need a lot of work. I think if we wanna make serious playoff pushes, we can't have one and a half sacks. Also, a huge shout out to SeatGeek, the best place to buy tickets for sponsoring today's video. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. Every single time I go to a football or basketball, game, I'm getting my ticket on the SeatGeek app. They take tickets from all around the web to make buying simple. And my favorite part is they rate tickets on a scale of one to 10. So look for the big green dots. Those are the best price tickets. And most importantly, I can get you a discount. You can get $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek when you use the code MMG. So once again, that's code MMG for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek and enjoy the rest of the video. Looks like Brisker's got two interceptions and Jalen Johnson's got one. Yeah, it's already looking like offense is going to be a breeze, but I just don't know how the playoffs are going to go if we can't score a little more. All right, it's week eight against the 0-6 Chargers. Sunday night prime time. This is a prime time game against the 0-6 Chargers in SoFi. I want to see Caleb Williams take a rep or two. All right, here's Caleb Williams with DeAndre Swift in the backfield and so many good wide receivers over there. Throws a laser. 
Rookie jitters. I don't know if that was on the receiver or Caleb. Frankly, the receiver could have moved towards the ball, though, no? Second and 10. Drops back, throws, caught! A very tough catch. All right, Caleb Williams, three wide receivers out left, takes the check down to DJ Moore. And honestly, that's why this offense is so good for Caleb Williams, because giving DJ Moore a drag at two yards is usually gonna be a lot more than two yards. Now, it looks like we got a run play coming up on first and 10. There's a handoff DeAndre Swift. Absolutely bottled up by Khalil Mack. He's having none of that. Another handoff DeAndre Swift. This one got him sleeping. Swift will go for 12 yards there. There. Make this first and 10 from the 10. I want to see Caleb put one in, baby. I'm calling it. This is going to DJ Moore for the touchdown. No. Ooh, it's Cole Clement. Honestly, a really good guy to be getting good reps to. Because if you can get a superstar tight end in there with multiple superstars in the backfield and at wide receiver, Caleb Williams is going to have the time of his life. Let's send to the end of this game and see if they can have some playoff success in season one. That would be really rare for this Bears team to instantly have success like that. Dude, they're smacking the shit out of the Chargers. 24 to 7, 31 to 14, ball game. Yeesh. Bears catch the dub 31 for 21 and look at Caleb's stats. 18 for 28, 287 yards and four touchdowns. Oh my goodness. And DeAndre Swift gets an upgrade from that game. 87 overall elusive back. Gets awareness, bulk air vision, entry juke move. Very mid. We can also give DeAndre Swift jukebox now. That should actually be a really good ability for him. Ooh, honestly, we did not close out the season that well. Only got three more wins since midseason. And look who we play in the wild card. It's an NFC North rival the Green Bay Packers who are 11 and 6. I'm excited to see how Jordan Love's been doing. The one seed, oh, big fucking shocker, Kansas City Chiefs. And the one seed over here, the Dallas Cowboys. Madden, please, man. I love franchise. I love Sims. This is some horse shit. Make playbooks matter, please. If you're just a child in the middle of Somalia and you got a copy of Madden 24, you would swear that the Dallas Cowboys are the greatest franchise of all time. You'd swear they win the Super Bowl every year. All right, let's see how we finished out this season. Caleb, ninth in the NFL passing yards. So it was honestly a pretty significant drop-off. Caleb Williams didn't even come close. Keep in mind, Madden's a little funky with this when you add in your own rosters, which is what I had to do for this. So technically, it is considering both Bryce Young and J.J. McCarthy as a rookie this year. But even still, J.J. McCarthy would have beat out Caleb Williams. So if it was only the rookies from the new class, I still lost. Damn, I thought we were cooking. I got a little ahead of myself. We still got some rebuilding to do. Honestly, the interceptions are holding us back here. 4,100 yards is awesome, but 37 to 14. Swift put up a really good season. Keenan and DJ go over a thousand, 12 and seven. Komet has 10 touchdowns. And Odunze, honestly, this is what he should be doing. Cause DJ Moore and Keenan Allen are pro football ready. Odunze is gonna need a sec, right? So 640 yards on 55 catches, four touchdowns. That's an awesome rookie season. It's not like Odell Beckham Jr. levels, but it's a solid rookie season. Defensively, dude, yeah, we just gotta get, we gotta get better players in here. Six and a half out of Montez Sweat is okay. He's not gonna get a dev trade upgrade like that. TJ Edwards took on a huge responsibility on this team. He had nine TFLs, four sacks and two interceptions. So really good season for him. Other than that, there's no big standouts. Brisker had two. Jalen Johnson had two. And Tremaine Edmonds was sort of there. It's all right. Casey Hayward leads the league with seven. Hello. Max Crosby had 21 sacks. And Quay Walker of the Green Bay Packers forced five fumbles. Damn. Isaiah Pacheco had 23 touchdowns and a washed ass. Ezekiel Elliott had 22. Shut up. Adam Thielen had 15 touchdowns. I love looking at the stats, man. The Bears have a wild card playoff game in season one. That's a lot better than we expected. But we're taking on a tough Packers team. Let's see how this goes. And the Packers in a snowy Lambeau field are clearly a little bit too much for Caleb Williams. It's 21 to 42. Looking to just make something out of this. You had 10 yards to run and wow. That was not Sigma. There was nothing giga chat about that. Oh, that's a good ball though. DJ Moore is in. A little stat padding at the end of the playoffs. I don't mind that. The fans are out here in some cold weather. So we might as well show them something. Despite that touchdown, the Packers were definitely too much. They'll move on to the divisional. And in our first season, we lose in the wild card to a rival. I gotta watch Jordan Love walk out here. That's a high scoring game though. And honestly, this is exactly what we're talking about. To take this team to the next level, this defense needs an improvement. Cause our offense is fine. Look, Caleb Williams threw four touchdowns. 
touchdowns. It's hard to beat a team when your defense gives up 42. Super Bowl 58 was between the Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens win it. Lamar gets Super Bowl and regular season MVP. And Offensive Player of the Year. Oh my God, he went off. We do have 70 million cap space and we're walking into free agency with all of it. Two best free agents, I honestly don't need either. Bakhtiari and Amari Cooper. Michael Pierce, I don't hate this. We are in a 4-3 defense. We definitely need a stud D tackle. My only concern about Michael Pierce is he's 31 years old and he's star dev. So maybe we get two good years out of him. Are we ready to make that push and commit 18 mil a year? I don't know. Honestly, we've got the cap and he's the only good guy on the board. He's somewhat interested in our squad too. Let's see if we can get him for two years with a player-friendly deal here. Let's see what else was offered. It looks like we're the best offer. I'm going to eval this. Michael Pierce is a Chicago Bear. That might be an overpay for an older D-tackle 86 overall, but if it gives this team more playoff success, I think it's worth it. Oh, and look at that. After one season, Caleb Williams is an X-factor and Cole Komet is a superstar tight end. Caleb Williams did not win Offensive Rookie of the Year. He got this for throwing for so many yards. Interestingly, he's a strong arm quarterback. I honestly, I kind of see Caleb Williams as more of an improviser. So I'm gonna give an improviser upgrade here. Break sack, throw you deep and throw under pressure. Dude, for a 23 year old to be x-factor is scary cole Komet gets superstar obviously that's amazing and then defensively michael pierce is now in great signing sanborn gets a depth trade upgrade kevin byard regresses though he is older headed into the draft it's hard to say what i want here we're round one pick 20 i do think it should be defensive but we got to see what's available on the board here's a right outside linebacker but he's a power rusher we kind of want a coverage linebacker and also he looks like shit sorry oscar Ooh, wait this guy kind of looks like a dog lance duggan Elite jumping and change of direction, great speed, solid acceleration, and he's a 6'1 man corner out of Oregon. We don't need corner nearly as bad as we need D-line, but I don't want to pass on this guy. I'm taking Lance Duggins. He, ooh, he's a dude. This guy's a monster. Hidden dev, 94 speed, 96 change of direction. Kind of looks like a savage too. Some of the face scans in this game are so bad, it makes you not want to use the player, but Lance might be kind of handsome if I do say so myself. Okay, here's an insane pass coverage linebacker, Ahmad Connor. Elite jump elite excel this is in the second round he only has one rating that's solid my only concern is block shedding is f that's a really bad stat to have f in but he's pass coverage so this is like this is what we need 84 speed 91 excel ahmad connor is gonna be a dog this was a very nice pickup but gotta work on that block shedding. all right i just made two spectacular picks i'm letting the cpu take over for the rest of this draft draft recap baby this is my favorite part Oh, shit. Lance Duggins is a 78 overall. Wait, we had two picks in the first? Wait, what? I, when I skipped to next user pick, I think it simmed right over top of this. Because the two picks I made were Duggins and Ahmad Connor, but the CPU picked up a 79 overall halfback. D'Angelo Emerson, who's hidden dev. Bro, I'm about to trade DeAndre Swift. Holy shit. Will Jeffries, middle linebacker. He's normal dev. Also, he's fucking 50 years old. Look at that man. That man's had four to divorces and he pays child support. You're telling me that's a 21 year old out of Virginia? Whatever. The rest of these picks were all pretty much whiffs, but wow, a 78 and a 79. Let's look at the entire NFL. This must've been a pretty strong class. That or we pulled fucking heat. 82 overall Ezekiel Lambert, 82 overall Darren Christie. Got the third and fourth best player in the class with pick 20 and 22. It's disgusting. Also look at this. Round one, pick three was the most criminal bust I've ever seen. That is Jamarcus Russell levels of whiff. Round one pick three, Chad Hunt is a 62 overall. This guy does not give a shit about ball. Dude, he went to Louisiana Tech. Why are you drafting? Whatever. That's on you, Patriots. Honestly, that's on you. Okay, this was an insane draft. I think I'm gonna trade DeAndre Swift and get some defensive talent. Now, we do need to be realistic with this because trades in Madden are low-key too easy. I know that in real life, running backs are not that important. I know that sounds kind of bad to say, Say. Granted, we do have one of the best running backs in the league now because not only did DeAndre Swift just have a great season, but he is superstar dev. So DeAndre Swift, 88 overall, 25, two years left on his deal. I'm going to move him because I'm going to let our rookie halfback take over for this team. What could DeAndre Swift and our first round pick net us? I kind of like BJ Ojolari. I'm not going to have to give up much for him. In fact, with James Conner kind of aging out of the Cardinals, I might be able to get a pick off of them. See, like with this ever shipping, 
in real life. That's the problem I have with the trade things. Is DeAndre Swift worth a first round pick and BJ Ojolari? I don't know, but he is an 88 overall superstar and this trade just went through. I'm taking it. I am gonna limit myself to that one and only trade though. Otherwise it's too easy. You honestly could scheme this so hard that you could build a God squad off trades alone and just run through the whole league, so. All right, boys, it's a brand new season. This team is developing super well. We've got an X factor at quarterback and we've got a new rookie running back. Thanks to the CPU, D'Angelo Emerson, 91 speed, 94 Excel, and he's only getting better. We traded DeAndre Swift, which netted us BJ Ojolari and the first round draft pick from the Arizona Cardinals. So I am praying on their downfall and we bolstered our D-line. Does anyone else have deja vu? We're five and two. We're taking on the four and three Lions. The NFC North is insanely good. Look at that. Six and one, five and two, four and three, four and three. It's a dogfight out here. Caleb Williams putting up another solid season and our rookie Amerson's at 442 and four. Swift was a lot higher than that at this point last season. Keenan's looking good. Odunze, DJ Moore, Cole Komet. These four are killing it. Let's take this all the way to the playoffs. We're five and two again. We added Michael Pierce. We drafted a stud. I think we'll really see the benefits this upcoming season since I have the Cardinals first round pick. Mm. And we just miss the playoffs. I think one thing that's kind of scary for this rebuild is the Packers are getting really good. They're 14 and three. The Lions went eight and nine, Vikings seven and 10. We kind of just missed the playoffs here. One or two game goes our way. We probably make it, but I am seeing ability unlocks, which is, should be good news. Oh my God. D'Angelo Emerson drafted by the CPU on accident is a superstar X factor. Oh my God. That trade was so good. Getting anything for DeAndre said was so good. I would have benched this dude. I would have sat him behind D Swift. All right, I gotta give him some abilities here. I'll give him first one free, tank, goal line back, and jukebox. Yeah, that's a ridiculous stack. D'Angelo Amerson's an 85 elusive, 81 power back too. Like he'll run through people. Morale is low though, because we didn't end the season very hot. We've been really bad in the second half of the season. All the wide receivers are doing okay here. Nothing incredible. And defensively, I'm so good at drafting in this rebuild. Ahmad Connor's a superstar. All right, I can't take credit for D'Angelo, but I can take credit for Ahmad Connor. We're going to start Ahmad Connor over Sanborn because he's superstar. That's really good. D'Angelo Emerson, at least the NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. Caleb with 4,100. 27 and 11 is okay. Emerson was 1,000 and 11 as a rookie is really solid. Keenan and DJ go over 1,000. Odunze never found the end zone though. Defensively, Edmonds and Edwards put up a ton of reps. Got three interceptions out of Brisker, two out of Gordon. Okay, Michael Pierce was a good signing. Six sacks out of Michael Pierce. Uh, but dude, we're just not getting the quarterback Montez Sweat got out sacked by Dexter. Trevon Dexter. What are we doing? Dude, this Packers team is scary. They made it to the Super Bowl, but they lost to Tua Tungavailoa. D'Angelo Emerson wins NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's huge. Wow. 93 overall, Javon Holland wants a $95 million deal. I don't know if we need him. I really don't like anybody in free agency. We're headed to the draft. All right, boys, it's time for the draft. We have round one pick 14 that is from the Arizona Cardinals and our pick is round one pick 19. So they didn't do great, but they could have done worse. I'll still take this though, for sure. I'm actually gonna take O-line here. Cooper Windham looks really good. I'll probably move him to guard or center because I don't need left tackle, but our offensive line, like my center and right guard are, are pretty shit right now. Windham, I just about to say, all I need is for you to be hidden dev. And he's got it, baby. 89 strength, 82 excel out of Florida. Beautiful. The offensive line is the backbone of a football team. This might be a rage. I don't know if he's hidden dev, but Kevin Byard's kind of on his way out. This guy's just okay, but he's the best option I have. Great strength, great change of direction. Good, good, solid, decent. If he's hidden dev, I will be shocked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's pretty damn lucky. I mean, his, his intangibles are okay, but he is hidden dev. He is young, and we do need a replacement for Kevin Byard, who can, continues every year to regress. Dude, pretty much no whiffs so far. We're drafting really well right now. I'm taking a potential reach here on Seth Anderson. With elite strength, the 6'4 run stopper, 300 pounds is hidden dev. I got another edge rusher. The best part, baby, I let the CPU take over for the rest. Damn. Oh my god, there's so many good players in here. Wyndham was a 76 overall. Great pick. Glover's a 74, which is better than I expected. Anderson's a 72, and then the CPU took a 72 free safety and a 73 tight end. A potential Cole Komet replacement. 
He is Hidden Dev, rookie 6'6", 275? This guy's fucking huge. And then Cop, were you Hidden Dev? That is five Hidden Devs in the top five. Keep in mind, this is normal strength for every position. We're just drafting really well. Best player in the class was an 83 overall. It's gotta be Zach Martin's brother, right? Mike Martin. Next best was 78, and then it's 76s. So we got a really good pickup here. Very top heavy class, one, one stud, and that was it. 2025 season, boys. Two X Factors in the backfield. Still got an X-Factor wide receiver. I'm gonna get Medlin up in the depth chart so he gets a few more reps. And I'll move Wyndham to our starting center as well. Defensively, Edmonds is now a superstar. Ahmad Connor regressed. Damn, this team's looking nice though. We're back! We are back in the playoffs. Finally, year three went awesome. We dominated the NFC North. Packers finally took a step back. Did they make the playoffs at nine and eight? They did not. Good, I don't wanna see them. Ravens are the one seed, Bucks are the one seed. All right, we're seeing some shift. We are taking on the San Francisco 49ers in the wild card, though. That is an interesting wild card matchup. They went nine and eight. Was there a big jump this season? Caleb Williams is kind of just like flatlining. Oh, never mind. Yards, he's flatlining. Touchdown interception ratio, one million times better. He's never had such a good ratio. That's almost an MVP caliber season, although I'm scared of what Mahomes did. Yeah, Mahomes, 4,644. Fuck you, Mahomes. And Joe Burrow might have got it, 42 and five. Damn. Hey, but great job, Caleb Williams. I'm proud of you in your third season. That's huge. Sick Juan Barkley with casually 1,700 yards and 27 touchdowns. You average a touchdown and a half a game. It's Blake Corum over there. D'Angelo Amerson with 1,414. Oh my God, those numbers are gorgeous. Every 100 yards, he gets a touchdown. Oh, you gotta love that. No fumbles either. DJ Moore took over in the passing game. Keenan Allen, an amazing season and 12 touchdowns. Odunze was sick of not finding the end zone. Found it seven times. And Amerson even got one through the air. Defensively, Tremaine Edmonds and then Ahmad Connor, the young pick up 120 tackles, five TFLs, four sacks, two interceptions. That might be a dev trade upgrade. 10 sacks out of Montez. That's so random. Six out of Michael Pierce and four out of Ahmad Connor. Seth Anderson, our left end pickup, had two sacks. Four interceptions out of Jalen Johnson, two out of Connor, two out of Edmonds, two out of Lance Duggins. Nice, Lance. I knew you were a stud when I got you. If we can sneak past the Niners here, I want to step in and watch what Caleb Williams can do. Oh, shit. Well, we got past the Niners, but we're taking on a 14 and 3. 92 overall offense Philadelphia Eagles squad. And this has got that Saquon Barkley that we're so scared of. Their top three players, Saquon Barkley, Jalen Carter, Jalen Hurts. We got D'Angelo Emerson, Caleb Williams, and Keenan Allen. These are two insanely good offenses. This should be a really fun game to watch. Division round's gonna be a big one, boys. I'm gonna take exactly three plays. I am interested to know your guys' opinions on me actually stepping in. But for this one, I do not wanna have a big impact. And I should have kept that ball, but D'Angelo Amberson's a dog. Gets six yards anyway. I wonder if I can hit him with it again. Do you think we can get Caleb Williams out in the open field? Oh my God, we might be able to. No, there's a flag. Oh, this is gonna be such a good run. Holding on the offense. Tough Cooper. Hey, he's only a rookie. He's only a rookie. Give, cut him some slack. All right, our final play is a second and 14, but I do see DJ Moore press coverage. And that's a bold strategy. A very bold strategy. DJ Moore, show him why. Let's go! Caleb Williams chucks a nuke. DJ Moore comes down with it. And that'll be the only impact I have on this game. Let's see what happens here. We do get a touchdown on that opening drive. Philly gets one back. Make this 14 to seven, 21 to seven, 21, 14. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 28, 14, 35, 14. And Caleb Williams is about to go into victory formation. Put up a huge 35 points. What I'm really excited to see is holding them to 21. Last time we were in the wildcard playoff two years ago, the Packers hung 42 on us in the snow. So to stop this high-powered Philadelphia offense, after all the improvements we've made to the defense feels really, really good. This will be third and two, 20 rushes, 140 yards and a touchdown out of Amerson. He's averaging seven yards a carry in the playoffs. This is his second year in the league. OP running backs, man. D'Angelo Emerson is going to fight his way to ice this game. That's the dagger. And that is all she rode for Philly. Caleb Williams in victory formation. Final play, baby. That was a 
gauntlet team to get through. I was very scared of that Philly team. If we can beat them, we can beat anybody in these playoffs. Well, the wild card was our first playoff win. This is our second, and now we're headed to our first NFC championship. Caleb Williams with an awesome game. 17 for 21, three touchdowns, and almost a perfect QBR. Dude, I think the MVP is D'Angelo Amerson. 6.8 yards per carry is actually disgusting. Caleb Williams is getting an upgrade. He's a 90 overall. Once again, I'm gonna give him improviser. I know this game's got him as a strong arm, but he's, to me, Caleb Williams is just reincarnated Aaron Rodgers. Awareness, break sack, throw XVD, throw on the run. I love it. Had to give him abilities too. He's got protected, inside dead eye, gunslinger, pass lead, elite, and fearless. He is stacked out. Time for the NFC Championship, boys. Do we see Dallas? Ooh. It's the Los Angeles Rams who look like they picked up Brandon Ayuk. Top three players of the Rams are Brandon Ayuk, Tredavious White, and Puka Nakua. They have really switched up that roster. You know our team. We've got a five overall advantage on LA though. Playing at Soldier Field. It feels great to have home field advantage. Well, they still got Matthew Stafford and of course, Caleb Williams and the Bears looking for their first Super Bowl. It's already 7-0 to zero, and I'm gonna get my three plays on defense as well. BJ Ojolari on the defensive line, Michael Pierce, Montez Sweat. We built all of that right there, boys. TJ Edwards. Ooh, it's a little RPO, but a quick tackle out of Ahmad Connor. I'm gonna go on Kevin Byard here. Kind of got to cover these two. He'll go over to Cooper Cup. And that's, that's my responsibility. I got to be there. Heavy set here. This could be a run. Let's get ready to blow this up with Kevin Byard. It is a handoff. There's Kyron Williams getting to the edge and going down. Excellent tackling. I can't impact this anymore, though. See if the Bears can make a goal line stand here, though. Second and goal. Definitely a pass. He rifles it over, and he's just out of bounds. Another attempt here, third and goal. Stafford's getting a little nervous. Hucks it deep. Fourth and goal, that is a stop, ladies and gentlemen. Hold no field goal, still seven to three. Chicago gets another, and another, and another. This is a blowout. Caleb Williams, familiar territory. A few handoffs to D'Angelo, and we're out of this game. There's the handoff, D'Angelo. Rams D-line's having none of it. 21 rushes, 76 yards, and a touchdown. That is a huge, huge NFC Championship victory. 20 for 28, 71% completion, three touchdowns, Caleb Williams. D'Angelo Amerson, 21 for 76, and a tutty. That duo is crazy. It's time to see who our Super Bowl opponent is, boys. Come on, baby. Let's get it right here, right now. Chicago versus both. Dude, this is such a dynasty. Because this is updated roster, so it's Lamar and Derrick Henry on that team. But we can't stop now, boys. This has been another electric season. Now, Super Bowl week is where you get depth trade upgrades, so why don't we take a look at our roster before we hop into this game. Caleb Williams rocking a 97. Amerson's rocking a 94. Moore, Odunze, and Keenan look as good as ever. Tevin Jenkins gets a dev trade upgrade? That is so random. I rarely ever see guards get it at all, so that is crazy. Offensive line looks great. Komet, now a star. Medlin, also a star. Defensively, Ahmad Connor and Jalen Johnson go superstar. We've got three abilities out there on defense now. That is an amazing thing to see. It's the big game, boys. The 91 overall Baltimore Ravens with Derrick Henry, Mark Andrews, and Lamar Jackson taking on the 90 overall Chicago Bears for potentially our first Super Bowl of the rebuild. Lamar has won MVP every single season. I'm getting chills, baby. Let's go. All right, we get three plays here. Let's make them count. Let's start out with a halfback base to D'Angelo Amerson. I love starting a Super Bowl with a run, man. A strong run, set the tone. Hit that gap, Amerson. Damn, there was daylight. Second and seven. Let's see how this looks. Coming all the way across on the drag is DJ Moore. Sets his feet and delivers. Caleb Williams for 32 yards. Nice opening throw in the Super Bowl. Look at that backfield, baby. Let's get a fun little camera angle for this one here. Keenan Allen on the dig. We're killing him with the dig routes. Two for two, 49 yards. That'll be my whole input. Let's watch, boys. Let's see if they can convert off that. Interesting set here. Two tight ends, both off the line. Wide receivers on the line. This is a pass. Caleb Williams flushed out, does get it off. And there's a flag, roughing the passer. Oh, a late holding on the offense, that was so late. First and 20, it's a handoff on first and 20, I guess when you got this good of a running back. Emerson will take it for 17. It's only psycho if it doesn't work. It's only stupid if it doesn't work. It was definitely a psycho play call. There's a quick screen pass looking like the old Chicago Bears. DJ Moore will take that to third and inches. Third and inches, gotta punch this through. Amerson, oh my God, it's play action. What is this play call? Caleb! Caleb steps up and takes it. That was a wild play call. First and goal, baby. In the Super Bowl, Caleb Williams drops back, throws, cuts. Got 
five yards there. I, that was Medlin. That's the backup tight end that we just drafted this year. Making a really big catch, but he can't extend for the goal line. Now nah, I think it's up to D'Angelo Amerson. If I'm a betting man, but damn, Baltimore's in the backfield before we can hand it off. Massive play here for Caleb Williams. It's third and goal. Drops back, throws quick, dropped. Rather broken up. I wouldn't know if I'd call that a drop. Oh, Dunze can't hang on to the end zone. And we're coming up with just a field goal. It's now three to seven. You got to score every time you touch the ball against a good team like this. 10 to seven, 17 to seven. Baltimore gets a touchdown. Baltimore makes a 17. It's 24, 17. It's 24 to 17 in the Super Bowl. Caleb Williams with three minutes left. Second and six. Oh, you just got to convert a few of these. Milk this clock. What a laser! And it's caught! Caleb Williams is almost over 300 yards. They're going for the throat. Hand this off. Give it to Amerson. Give it to Amerson. It's a quick throw to DJ Moore. They got the fourth best defense in the league, but they've led up 428 yards in this Super Bowl. And that's the two-minute warning. Second and three. There's the handoff to Amerson. Takes it to the four. Baltimore's got to use a timeout. Best case scenario, you get both their timeouts here, and then you pop in a touchdown. Even could settle for the field goal because you'll take the two-possession lead either way. Second and goal, we're in I formation. There's Amerson. Amerson is in! D'Angelo Amerson is quickly becoming a Chicago Bears legend. This guy's a stud. The first turnover of the entire Super Bowl. I just missed it. I'm sorry. Jalen Johnson just picked off Lamar for 29 yards. It was literally the first time either team turned the ball over. And now it's victory formation. And Caleb Williams is loving victory formation in these playoffs. It's all over. Warm up the car, Baltimore fans. Chicago has toppled the dynasty. They didn't just topple it. They smoked it. They're smoking on that Ravens pack, boy. Oh my goodness. Jaquan Brisker is hype. D'Angelo Amerson, deservedly hype. This guy is a dog. Lamar's being a good sport. I respect that. He's got two rings already and two MVPs. And of course, Caleb Williams has got to win Super Bowl MVP. He put up like 300 yards and three touchdowns every single game in the playoffs. You gotta love that, man. I never get sick of seeing this. Not every rebuild is as hard as the others. I feel like this one was, honestly, they made it pretty easy for us. Caleb Williams is so good. Emerson was a very lucky pick and very impactful, but it always feels good to see that Lombardi. Honestly, when we went for it on first and 20 with a stretch and got 17 yards, pretty much knew we were gonna win this game. Caleb Williams with 302 yards and two touchdowns. D'Angelo Emerson had, oh my God, 12.5 yards per carry and two touchdowns. He actually should be MVP. I don't think he'll get it because they prefer the quarterback, but dude, that's disgusting. I'm 10 handoffs. Made Derrick Henry look like shit. Derrick Henry fumbled. DJ Moore had 127. Nobody else did too much. Keenan Allen did get in the end zone. Odunze, oh, three for 55. Komet got in the end zone as well. And then defensively, Ahmad Connor with the most tackles, but the biggest play of the game was Jalen Johnson's interception. That sealed the deal. And now we can head into the offseason. We still have cap space. Like, we could actually sign a wicked free agent and just run this Super Bowl right back. We got 32.6 million Cap. Now, I'm not interested in signing somebody for the long term. We have too many guys that we still need to re-sign. Odunze, Caleb Williams, D'Angelo Amerson. And each of those guys is going to want a pretty damn big contract. Actually, as I say that, my salary cap just went down to about zero. Yeah, guys, our cap space is $8 million. This is actually a really, it's a nice free agent class, and they all want to play for us. I have no bread. I am broke as shit, gentlemen. I'm sorry. Yep, sorry. Sorry, gentlemen, we're broke. We were the best team in the league, so that does give us round one pick 32. And and we desperately need O-line. Nate Davis, either left in free agency or retired, I'm not sure. But Damian Stevenson does not look like a good prospect. Shit. What about Kurt Davidson out of Wisconsin? You like better. Great strength, great change of direction. I'm gonna go Kurt Davidson. Hidden dev guard. That's exactly what we needed. All right, hey, I know I already won the Super Bowl, but I wanna see if this team could be a dynasty because it feels like it could be. I'm actually gonna pick up a wide receiver here because you know who's on his way out of this team is Keenan Allen. Now, we, we still have DJ Moore and Odunze, but I really liked having three insane wide receivers. So I kind of wanna stick to that. That being said, that guy sucked. Byron King. There's not a lot available here. I'm gonna take Byron King. Damn. 6'2", 289 speed. At the end of the second round, there was not a lot there. I probably just should have traded that pick. I think that was my first, that was my first really big whiff of the day. Draft recap. What do we got, baby? Oh, okay, so Kurt Davidson was an amazing pickup. 74 overall guard right there, and then whiff, 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 whiff. Damn. Our final draft was our worst one by far, but we are in a good spot. We can afford a trash draft, and actually, this is just a very weak class. Very top heavy with an 83 overall 
overall next best was a 79. And it's 77, 77, 77, 77. Look at where these 77s were drafted though. The third round for both of them. Terrell Edmonds and Seth Mixon. Tough draft. Not a lot of talent in the first round. All right, boys, here is your final roster. This is everything I've done in these four years to get this team ready to be a dynasty. Davidson is now on the offensive line. Wyndham's at center. This, this O-line looks really good. I really like how it's turned out. It's not insane, but it's solid. Komet and Medlin is a nice tight end duo. Keenan Allen now regressing, but still superstar X Factor. DJ Moore is hitting his stride at 92, and Odunze is an 83. I think it is about time that we gave Odunze a few more reps than Keenan Allen, though. I'm sorry, Keenan. Emerson and Caleb is a crazy backfield duo. And defensively, we got Ahmad Connor, Tremaine Edmonds, and Jalen Johnson all at superstar. Ojolari and Montez Sweat as our edge rushers. Sadly, though, Seth actually regressed, and Michael Pierce retired. Ton of depth at this position, though. Look at that. Glover and Brisk are both looking good. Bayard still kicking. Duggins is an 82 and Stevenson is an 83. So great corners. I'm going to send this team to the playoffs. I assume we go back to back. I don't know about back to back Super Bowls. But we should absolutely make the playoffs. Wait, there's actually no way. I'm actually living in a simulation. We have the exact same wild card matchup with the exact same record, except they have home field advantage now. Caleb Williams officially had his best season though. Third in the league in passing, 4,500 yards, 44 and seven. Definitely his best season. Emerson put up another spectacular one. More with 1,400. Keenan Allen. I tried to give him less reps, and he got 14 touchdowns and 1,200. Komet at 750 and 7. Odunze, 722 and 9. Defensively, look at this. 4, 3, and 3. Damn. A lot of interceptions for our squad. Seven sacks out of Seth Anderson. I'd like to see that. I'm simming it all the way to the Super Bowl. Let's see if we can get through the gauntlet of these teams and actually go back to back. It is not easy to do. Out of all the rebuilds I've done, I may have won exactly one, maybe two back to back simmed Super Bowls. Like I said, it's not easy. Damn, this would have been a sex Super Bowl in real life. I'm telling you, this Ravens squad is such a dynasty. This Ravens team in the divisional beat the Jaguars 42 to zero. Then they beat the Chiefs. Now they're back in the Super Bowl. We lost. Damn. San Fran got redemption. They they beat us in round one. Then they beat the Bucks. Then they beat the Cowboys. Now it's Niners versus Ravens Super Bowl. All right, boys. Here's the full recap. Ravens won. A, dude, literally we're the Ravens stoppers because they can't be stopped if it's not us. Lamar wins Offensive Player of the Year and Super Bowl MVP. In 25 is when we beat Lamar. We smacked him around too, straight up. Caleb Williams won Super Bowl MVP. 24, it was Packers Dolphins. But Lamar won MVP. In 23, Lamar won MVP, Super Bowl MVP and the Super Bowl. That's, that team is so good. They were in three of the last four Super Bowls and they won two of them. But hey, we clutched it up, baby. We stopped them. All right, boys. This was an awesome rebuild. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This was one of the most fun ones I've done in a while. I love the updated rosters. And this Bears team is nasty. I'm excited to rebuild them in Madden 25. Should be really fun. Hey, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.